That's looking pretty rough. It's been sitting a long time before I got it and sat it here. So let's take it in, see if we can give it a second chance at life. So if you've never used one of these things, they are absolutely amazing. They are the quickest way to heat up a shop or cold space or outdoor space. This one, what I know about it so far is that it's orange and has a yellow cord. Let's go from there. So virtually all of these are made by the same company, um, Dessa. And no matter what brand they say on the side, co-op, master heater, ready heater, no matter what it is, they're virtually all identical. And you can tell if your the back of yours looks like this, it's made by the same Dessa company. So we can see that our air intake filter is crapped up. So before we suck that in, uh, we're gonna go through it. We're gonna take off this cover. There's just three screws. Well, no, two screws on this side. So these are essentially an engine. Um, instead of an internal combustion engine, I guess you could call it like something like an external combustion engine. The number one question I get with these is, well, doesn't that just burn your eyes and the smell from it just choke you out and the carbon dioxide that it put out just almost kill you? Actually, it doesn't. If you have these tuned right, they put out virtually zero carbon monoxide and you shouldn't smell them at all. I've been running them for years with CO detectors in front of them. If you have them tuned correctly, just like an engine, if you have a carburetor tuned perfectly, you shouldn't, you know, it shouldn't be blowing out black rich smoke. And so these actually run even more efficient than like something like an engine because you can overheat these and you run like a perfectly lean mixture. Unlike a car, you actually have to run slightly rich. But essentially you have a, we'll go over it a little more in depth, but you have a nozzle that squirts diesel fuel or kerosene in a combustion changer. You have a spark plug and or an igniter, just two wires close to each other that sparks constantly. And you have a fan that just pulls in air from the back and blows it through this chamber. So this is your, this is the intake of your carburetor. This is your jet or your fuel injector. And this would be your throttle body. And you got your spark plug, ignites it constantly. That's all there is to it. Uh, we can adjust the amount of fuel that's sprayed out back here with the back part of our fan that is actually our air pump. So our air pump dictates how much fuel is squirted into the chamber and the uh, velocity of the fan stays the same at all times. So the air going in stays the same. We can adjust the fuel going in to make it lean or rich. Lean, no smell, rich, eyes burn, chokes you out, smells like death. So this tube right here actually goes down just directly into the fuel tank. This other one um, right here is actually your air pump. So that's pushing air through and that in, is creating a venturi effect and pulling up fuel. And the number one problem with these things is just a cracked either fuel intake line and or vacuum pump line. Generally they crack like right at the fittings. This one actually doesn't look bad at all, but that's the number one problem is people have all these issues with them and you just have a little split in one of these lines and it causes it not to want to pull up fuel. The second most common problem is like a dirty spark plug and or no spark. Third is a stiff fan. This fan does not want to spin because their bearing or and or bushing right here, it's always a bushing, needs to be lubricated and or we got crap in the back of our um, impellers. There's a little impeller pump back here, fan pump, and we'll take that apart right now and look back there. First, I'm gonna just take some automatic transmission fluid, just a really thin oil. And we're gonna start it soaking on this bushing. And we're gonna get some right on the inside just to drip down on that bushing right there, just so it can start freeing up. And that actually made a little bit of a difference just right there. But now we're gonna take off this back cover this right here is your test port and you should get a, we'll show you in a minute once we get it running, but you need a PSI gauge here to actually be able to set it. And this is your air pressure, how much pressure, i.e. fuel gets pumped into the combustion chamber. Um, clockwise makes it higher, counterclockwise makes it lower. And a little filter. Even have a little foam filter right here that's all crapped up. 
This has been sitting about 25 years, 20, 25 years unused. Somewhere in there. And then behind here, we're gonna have our impeller veins. And you see these just spin in there. They get thrown out and as they spin and push air out, suck air in this side and they push air out this side. And this should be fairly flat. You really shouldn't feel like a, a, a groove across this. These veins should sit virtually flush. And as long as they look like this, they're good. They don't, they just don't go bad. They do sell kits where you can replace all these veins. Um, one thing is you don't really wanna flip them because the outside is now rounded to that and the other side is going to be kind of square. It's not yet formed. So I'm just gonna leave those where they are. I'm gonna just take some acetone carburetor cleaner and just kind of clean those surfaces up just a little bit. And I can still see my machining marks go flat across the whole surface and I can still see them all the way there and I feel no groove when I rub my hand across right where you see where they've been rubbing and when they have it. This is your back ceiling plate and if there's too much of a gap there then they're gonna not create enough pump pressure. So pull the whole assembly off just to show you guys and this is what it looks like. So you can buy this entire part or and or just the veins. I'm just going to clean up in here just a little bit. I'll stick it right back on. So I'll just pull off this little bushing. I'll, I'll oil it. I can't leave well enough alone. So we'll just put a drop right here, right there. Let me spin this for a minute and then I'll just wipe it all clean. And that, again, that's just transmission fluid. You just need a really, really light oil. Uh, motor oil would work. Mo motor oil, in my opinion, is just a little bit thick. Put this back on. I mean, I just put the teeniest, I just kind of let it wick in there. You see, I just, the fan is just spinning beautifully. I don't like to mix these things up. So where they are is where they are. Um, you can remove this screw and this screw and set this gap at the top to virtually nothing. You pretty much don't want any gap there, maybe Maybe two thousandths, three thousandths, um, pretty much as close as possible without touching. And then we'll just put this back on, feel the resistance in your fan. If your fan all of a sudden gets stiff and you can't spin your fan, then something's wrong and check, check everything. But we'll screw that back on. Just cut out a new little filter for here. This is your outlet filter. It's like a felt and it's stapled to your cork gasket. Completely reusable. I blew it off with a compressor. Wasn't even that dirty. We have a little bit of dirt, dirt dauber or insect did right there. So this right here is just, this bleeds off all your excess pressure. And it is simply a, this little plastic screw, a spring and a ball. So the high pressure just pushes that ball out and bleeds off any excess pressure. This is just simply a port to monitor the pressure that's in here. I've seen plenty of these with cracks on them so the air pressure is just bleeding out the side somewhere um, or one of the airlines but I've seen them cracked multiple times from these three screws being way over tightened. The screw in my gauge. This is 8th inch NPT and I just got a little barbed fitting and then I just have a this is actually for like an automotive vacuum. And we'll just tighten that in lightly. We don't want to break it. Again, this is plastic. Just boom. Now, all of these will have a pressure written somewhere on them. This particular one, all that information is uh, long gone. Uh, you can't read nothing. You can't read anything. But generally, something about this size, which I think this is about a 50,000 BTU, is going to be around... 3.6, 3.7 PSI. Plug it in. Oh, it's all just gonna break on me. 
good head. This might have sat out in the sun because that's completely busted off now. I don't want to ruin the temper of my screwdriver either. There we go. There it goes. So that port consists of a steel ball, a mangled spring apparently, and a just a little plug. It has a hole that goes all the way through it, which I might have plugged up by melting it. No, we can still go through. So we'll utilize that. You can order all these parts, but they'll still work. If we can get as long as we can get the pressure right close and get that spring to stay in there, we should be good. Kind of. Come on. It'll be a little rough going for a minute, but we'll get it in there. I don't know if you can see it dropping. So a quick rundown of how the safety system works on this. You'll have this little reset button. Um, it should be sticking in there, but this one has been bypassed. So what happens is you turn it on and it runs for 10 seconds, five to 10 seconds. And then there's supposed to be an optical sensor right here, a photo cell that just points in there and sees flame. And so when it sees flame, it keeps this from tripping off. When it doesn't see flame, it trips this off. So what it does is if when it runs out of diesel fuel and it goes out, it will trip the whole thing off. And or if it doesn't ignite, it should trip this off and tell you to, you know, then you can redo it. This one though, somebody has bypassed um, simply by connecting uh, likely just connecting the two wires um, in this cluster right here. Um, I'm not sure exactly which wires it is. I could look at, the, there's a wiring diagram on the underside of almost every single one. And I could look at it real fast. It's gonna be likely this blue wire right here to somewhere. It's probably these two wires right here that normally would not be connected. Well, that was just connected straight to power wire. I don't know. It's one of the two wires. They just connected it to bypass that optical sensor, which is what it is. Um, but you can see that we have spark. We are going to take out this entire burn chamber because I see um, an old mouse house down in there. And we're going to try to empty that whole thing out. I've actually never had to take that apart. So it'll be a learning experience for both of us. At the back, it's filled up a good third of the way take these rivets off and re-rivet it or just put a spot weld right there and it looks like this back case just comes prize right out of there maybe if you guys have never used carbide burrs they're absolutely amazing there we go surprise oh it smells so bad Whew. i'm glad i didn't like that Ugh. Is it under here? Look, I think it might be under here. You think we're going mouse hunting? So apparently the mouse needed some reading material because this was tucked in there with it. So they it pulled this. It's actually metal. They actually pulled this off the side of the transformer and took it through that hole. Like they drug it through this, which wasn't <laughs> probably spent a little while doing that. But this is nice in condition. The inside's actually stainless steel. So it's not rusted out or anything, your brain burn chamber. So we'll weld that back in. But I have to take off the whole thing to actually look at the fuel pickup now because my fuel pickup line is rotted as you saw. It's four little screws. This whole assembly should lift right off. Spark plug wire, our air pump wire. Oh sweet, we got more mouse. Whatever that is. Why did I touch it? I guess I gotta touch it anyway. Can we make it in the garbage can one shot? Oh, we missed. Dang it! And there's our, there's a little filter inside there. So you can pull it out without poking it. And 
and it looks spotless. I got that on the outside. Right, the inside would fill up, but blow that out and it's good. The filter looks amazing. So I didn't have any rubber fuel line the right size, eighth inch inside and almost three eighths of an inch outside. But I had um, a Tigon, which is this yellow stuff. It's used generally for like weed eat or stuff like that. But then it didn't seal up on the outside, so just a thicker piece of Tigon, you know, some quarter inch Tigon on the outside, eighth inch in, on the inside. But I could order this line, but I would never use it enough. So that will go back down there. I'm gonna seal up this. I'm gonna use, this is um, called Temflex. It's by 3M. It's about, I mean, it's really thick. And what it is, is it's like a permanent rubber splicing tape. So you put it on, it's not sticky. It self seals. And by you stretching it, it creates this permanent rubber thick coating, like 10 times thicker than, than like electrical tape. Put that on the outside. They won't even stick to itself unless at the very end you kind of stretch it. So the stretching action, action I think creates heat or something. And then it just bonds to itself permanently. Like you can't, once that sets up, you can't get that off. You have to slice it and, and pull it off. Put a little piece down there, but hopefully that'll give it a little bit more life. It just comes with like a little bit of a backing paper just so it doesn't bond to itself on the roll. Let's make sure the filter's still in there. So I'm gonna check the spray pattern on my jet. The back one is the fuel, the front one is the air. I'm gonna use carburetor cleaner. So the fuel should be a nice straight stream out the middle. And it is, and the air actually sprays around the side and pulls the fuel out. So the air should give me a nice like fan. And right now I see that it's spraying more out at the bottom and the top. I'm not getting an even fan. So I'm gonna blow through this for a second. I'm actually going to, it actually comes apart. So you can actually take it apart. There's a nut back here and a nut right here. I'm gonna take it apart and I'm actually gonna clean the inside. This is your nozzle. The fuel goes through the center, the air blows through these passages. So I just unscrewed this really carefully. I did put a little bit of mark right there. I'll have to kind of file off, but you wanna be careful. And then this is at the tip right up there. The fuel comes out the center and these little passages swirl the air for atomization and I have debris. I don't know if you guys can see that. So I'm just cleaning that out, being really careful to take this whole thing apart. And then in there, I will just clean out as well, put it back together. But generally that's all that's wrong with these. I get a beautiful pattern all the way around now. Okay, that got that all back in. Everything hooks hooked back up. Fuel goes to the back port, air goes to the front port. Now you can't run this actually with the cover off. The kerosene in here is actually super old. Um, it's 20 plus years old. Some of it spilled out just cause it was so full. Um, just me carrying it around, but it looked good. It looked in there, it looks good. It smells like kerosene. Kerosene and diesel really never go bad unless they kind of clump up or uh, I think diesel can grow algae. I've never seen that, but I've been told it can happen. You can get water in there. And if you don't have a pressure tester and stuff like that, one of the ways to tell if it's running good is this cone should be red. Um, should be almost cherry red. If not, then you're running too rich and you're gonna smell it. See if it fires up. Right away. Oh yeah, put me out some nice hot air. That smells like mouse. Son of a bee. <coughs> Gonna open the door for that one. Oh, that's gonna take a while to burn that off. <coughs> that's what your cones should look like. Exactly like that. You're burning clean, you're burning lean, and there's no smell at all. Uh, roughly 3.6, I think is about right for this one. You should just be able to walk to the front and you shouldn't smell anything. It should just be warm air. If you smell something, your pressures are wrong. And it'll say on every single unit will have its own pressure. It'll say right on the side somewhere.
cleaned up the wiring, tucked it in there, uh, put a grommet around the ele electrical cord. The original electrical cord looks just fine. They actually, it doesn't, they don't draw hardly any amps at all. It just has to spin that little fan. Beautiful. I ran it for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes with this right in front of it. Well, uh, six feet in front of it so it didn't melt it and absolutely zero carbon monoxide. So you have it tuned correctly and it doesn't put out any carbon monoxide. What happens if we put it way higher than you can reach? What if I put it up here? Dub. Wow. There you go. That's how that's done. <laughs>